The next step will be to, to saddle the seat. Saddling is the process of making this seat body conforming by making it concave. That makes it comfortable to sit in. Now we have a number of things that we want to take into consideration. One is we want to get it down so uh, to depth, but we also want to leave this rolled surface here where your legs will extend over, the sitter's legs will extend over the, the edge of the seat. And uh, we're going to have to lay that out, and we're going to do that uh, with this process. Next step, we're going to lay out the top of the seat. There's a, a groove that's going to be um, uh, in the seat here, and then the two uh, ridge lines that will come out here. To lay them out, I'm going to take this dimension from the template. That's where it comes from, right there. And I just use a divider and Now these two points here are just an arc, and I can do that freehand like that. And that lays out the area of the seat that's going to be saddled, that's going to be removed to make it body conforming and concave. We're going to establish the depth that we're going to cut to when we saddle by making a plunge cut with a circular saw. I've set the blade to three quarters of an inch. Set it on here on the center line. And that's how deep I'm going to go. This is the tool we're going to use to remove the bulk of the wood from the, from the uh, seat when we saddle it. It's called a gutter adze. Do you know why it's called a gutter adze? Because if you make Windsor chairs, you've got to have one. No, it's called a gutter adze because to gutter is an archaic term for hollowing. Let me work for it a little bit, and then we'll talk about what I've done. Now the tool frightens a lot of guys because it's a sharp edge around their toes. Notice when I use it, I choke up, my hands are together. Think of it as a batter who's going to swing for a single. Not swinging for the wall, but just swinging for a, a, a single. You're not laying down a bunt, you're swinging for a single. When I lean forward, I put my forearm on my knee. That allows me to do this and nothing more. In order to, for this tool to get out of control, I would have to literally break my, the bones in my forearm. I start chopping near the middle and I work my way out so that uh, I, I, I find this range. If I try to start out near the edge, I'm liable to hit over the line. I don't want to do that. Now as I come near my foot, notice how I instinctively roll it up. If I were to miss, the only thing I'm going to do is hit the sole of my shoe.
This is the results of the gutter ads. Now, it's not smooth, it's very rough, but that was the job of the tool, was to get rid of a lot of wood quickly. Notice here what's left of the plunge cut. Now I'm clamping the seat on the corner of the bench for a reason. I won't have to move it again. All the remaining operations will be done with it in this location. The next tool in the process is called a scorp. It's a knife edge tool. It's just a round cutting tool that will allow me to continue the process of removing wood and making this more smooth. Once again, I've got to be thinking of grain direction. I'm going to cut from there to about the middle and then go around to the other side and cut in that direction. Okay, I'm done with the scorp, and I'm going to set it aside. Notice the plunge cut. There's still a little bit of it showing here. It's going to get smaller and smaller as we move through the next uh, series of operations. But before I make this any more smooth, I want to take wood off the front here to produce this roll. Now, I'm going to, I'm, when I make this cut, I'm going down about halfway through the thickness of the seat. So I can make a mark about like that to guide me. Now, my cuts are going to make up to, to here. And again, they're slicing cuts. There we go. Begin to see a rough shape of a seat. Next tool in the operation is a compass plane. It's a round bottom plane. It's curved both side to side and end to end, and it's going to allow me to get in here and smooth this out even more. Now, in using the compass plane, it's the heel of my palm that's going to be providing the force. I grip the plane like that and then I add my other hand to keep it from vibrating or moving side to side. And then it's a very brisk stroke. A lot of force behind it. Notice how I set it up and then a brisk, forceful stroke. There goes the plunge cut. So I'm down to depth. The next step I'm going to do will be to create the same level of refinement as I have here on these front edges. And that's going to have to be done with a spoke shave. Pushing the spoke shave. And there we go, a seat that is still rough, but 
It's got its basic shape. We're now going to smooth it up with a, with a finish tool, which is called a travisher. Travisher is very much like a spoke shave. Uh, basically, it's a curved spoke shave. The blade is set so that it's, it's got a heavier cut at this end. It's cocked, so it takes a heavier cut here, medium cut, and a shallow cut. And so all I have to do is move back and forth to find exactly the cut I want. Again, I put my thumbs behind the blade like this to give me, to put the, the force, the cutting force behind the tool. And as I work with it, I'm putting a lot of weight down on this with my shoulders. There's a lot of downward force uh, on this tool. As I get down into the center, I'm severing my chip. I'm coming up like this and not running into the grain on the other side. And that's going to give me, that's going to prevent any tear out. There we go, that's pretty well done. Next thing I want to do is get down in front and look at my front edge and make sure that it's uniform and even. I'll take a little more off with a spoke shave right here. Now notice that this edge rolls. It is not an inclined plane. It's actually a rolled edge, and that's important. It's important because your legs are going to hang over here, and you don't want a sharp edge cutting off the circulation in the back of your legs. Notice that the roll is lower than the original surface of the seat established by the pommel and by this point on the platform. And this is a pretty good test to make sure that you're low enough. There we go. Next step will be to sand this seat and then run this groove. Now, after I'm done with the travisher, the final step is to sand the seat. I'm doing it with 60 grit paper. That's pretty coarse, uh, but that's also not the finish. Uh, I'm not done with my sanding. I'm going to be doing more later on. Through the chair, there'll be a, n a number of, of times that I will sand. I'm not trying to remove the marks of the travisher. I'm softening them. I'm proud of the, the tracks left by the travisher. That's a hand-tooled surface. It's like the outside edge of the seat. That too is a hand-tooled surface. I can do that with hand tools and I'm proud of it. And so I'm going to leave it. I'm not gonna to try to remove all that evidence. But I do wanna soften it. Notice that when I sand, I'm using the heel of my palm so I get good pressure. There. The last thing we're going to do in this segment is run a decorative groove around the seat following the line that we traced with the compass. The purpose of the groove 
is to create a transition between the saddling, which is concave, and the platform, which is flat. I'm just going to use a vayner. And all I will do is follow the pencil line, just run the pencil line up the chip. There you go. You can see how the groove separates the two uh, surfaces, the flat and the concave surface, and creates uh, an interplay of light and shadow. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. Thank you for watching this content. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back frequently for more Windsor chair making tips and tutorials.